Hi everyone, my name is Joe Legilia, and on this episode of Not Your Average Joe, powered by Mortgage Message, we're talking with Donna Allen Relag of Allen Force here in Plainfield. Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Not Your Average Joe, powered by Mortgage Message. My name is Joe Legilia, and today I'm joined with Donna Allen Relag of Allen Force. Donna, welcome to the show. Thanks, Joe. Absolutely. So, Donna, I, I, I'm so excited for this interview because as we were talking before we went live, um, I've been hearing so much about Allen Force. And so I kind of want to start the interview off by, in your own words, just sharing right off the bat, what is the mission of Allen Force? The mission's pretty cut and dry. Um, we're a nonprofit and we serve veterans of all eras through health, fitness, and recreation. Wow. Um, and I want to piggyback off of that talking about where you started this concept from, kind of where did this thing whole, you know, begin? How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> as much as you need, as much as you need. Um, so my background is in therapeutic recreation. I've worked with people with disabilities all my life, and I've just been immersed in some amazing cultures um, with people uh, throughout my career. And one of uh, the places I was working prior, Alan Force, uh, they received their executive director at the time. It was during the height of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. And there were so many different veterans coming back, surviving injuries, frankly, that nobody would have survived before because of the technology that we have now medically. Mm. And it's pretty amazing, but it has left so many people with quite quite a variety of intensive injuries and long-term illnesses. So the director where I used to work said, you know, somebody's got to do something to help all these veterans that are in the community now. Hmm. And uh, his name is Larry, Larry Reiner. And he kept saying this and kept saying this and then thought, well, wait a minute. I have the training to do this. We have the equipment to do this. We have the facilities to do this as a special recreation association it's our job to do this. And so um, they were looking at how to start up a program and they actually, um, to kind of flash back before that, it was probably about eight years prior there, I used to work there full time and um, had since stopped to start a family and was blessed to be a stay-at-home mom. So literally one night I kind of said a prayer and said, you know, I want to start giving back. What can I do um, with my talents and still be as much stay-at-home mom as possible? and um, I literally got a call the next day from my former employer and they said your name came up in a meeting and we got a grant to serve injured veterans and a couple people mentioned your name we know you haven't been around but would you be interested in part-time you could do a lot of it from home and are you interested and I said oh my gosh yes no I don't know anything <laughs> about the military right. and they said well we don't either and so I was like okay well give me a couple months to think about it and do some research. And in my head, it was, you know, this population deserves everything. Mm. And I wanted to make sure I could do it mm. effectively yeah. and up to standards, you know, above the standards that they would deserve. So they gave me a couple months. I did all kinds of research and um, ended up starting a program for them um, at Northeast DuPage Special Recreation called Healthy Minds, Healthy Bodies. So that program in its first year, I was able to reach out to over 50 veterans that implemented, that started in that program. And the feedback they had was just incredible. And they said, where can I get my sister who served, you know, in Wisconsin into this program? Where can I get this? And, and so I was like, uh, so I started making phone calls and talking to people and doing seminars and uh, workshops and, and just teaching. And they, um, where I was at, at Nedzra, said, oh, hold on a minute, pull back the reins. We don't serve, you know, outside of our 11 districts. And their mission was in DuPage County. And they said, you have our blessing, take it and run. So the veterans, like, go, go, we've got your back. You know, do what you need to do to make this grow. So after um, probably three, literally three months of trying to figure out <clears throat> nonprofits need to have a name in order to file the paperwork to become a nonprofit. So we were trying all these different names and everything was trademarked or used here or used there. And one of the veterans said, on a side note, um, said, Donna, you know, 
your passion during serving these veterans has become your dad, who mm-hmm. actually passed away when I was a baby and he was in the army. He said, name it in memory of your dad. Wow. So I was like, oh my gosh. So I, I, we came up with Alan Force and I submitted that name for like the 18th name we tried. And it, it came back immediately free and clear. Wow. So Alan Force was born, and that was in um, 2012. We got our official paperwork finally. It took 14 months. What an amazing just <laughs> kickoff to this interview because, I don't know, I mean, I'm sure our audience has goosebumps. There's so much to unpack with everything you just shared. Um, one of the things that I want to make sure I don't miss is, um, first off, what an unbelievable honor to your father um, as, as someone who served um, in that generation, um, you know, as as we look back, just made so many sacrifices. Um, and obviously, um, this being born through that love from a daughter to a father from beyond is really just an amazing thing. Um, we could stop the interview yes. there and that would be enough. <laughs> um, but I but I also want to touch on the the moment of kind of asking and lifting up in prayer for direction. And I just think that's such a pivotal thing that you stopped, got quiet, listened, and then actually pursued. Um, just to kind of take us to that moment a little bit deeper as far as f- calling on the strength to move in this direction. First off, not knowing what was in front of you, but second of off, having the strength to walk in faith. Boy, that's a whole other story in itself. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try not to get emotional. Sure, Thank you. no problem, no problem. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. It was... So it was actually a pretty personally chaotic time in my life, and I needed something to grab onto. Hmm. It, uh, so in answer to that, it was actually a a pretty personally chaotic time in my life, and there were a lot of changes happening, a lot of um, uh, discomfort, disruption, uh, different directions that were gonna be taken at the time that I, I didn't think I wanted Uh, my life to go in that direction and so prayer came out of that to just have something to kind of hold on to Mm. and find a a path to go forward and I have to say within the chaos in my household also came the support and encouragement to move forward Mm. so that was huge and then as I started to walk this journey um, and accepted that that part-time job to start up that uh, utilizing that grant for injured veterans Um, and as the path kept going and then it turned into the need to to grow it um, my thoughts kept going back to I don't know how to do this stuff you know I I've been a, a rec therapist all my life my job was to take people out you know rock climbing and adapt the the climbs for their injured arm or to take them through caves or to take them and, and push their uh, limits um, on backpacking trips for a week or you know just different things um, like that and so as all these things started coming to fruition with the it looked like what the need was to start a nonprofit. I was like, I don't know how to write up a business plan. I don't know how to find funding. I don't know how to file the papers for this stuff. And lo and behold, all of a sudden, you know, volunteering at my child's school is some, the mom I'm sitting next to said, oh, I work for a place that does this. And then my girlfriend calls a college roommate from years ago. And I'm like, do you know anything about websites? She's like, I work for a web designer. We're looking for a pro bono project. It's like, okay. And then I'm like, and then when things would get challenging again, I'm like, okay, you know, I, I, I don't know how to do this. What do you want from me? You know, this isn't, no. And I, every time I tried to close the door, it literally got kicked open again <laughs> with somebody put in my path and saying, oh, I know how to do that. And we're looking for a pro, no, pro bono project with the place I work for or with my business or whatnot. And I was like, okay, I can't fight this. This, this has to happen. And it's apparently being called on me to make it happen well it's 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 clear and obvious that you are walking the path that that you are destined to walk and i just think it's a beautiful um moment of inspiration that i just and i appreciate you going a little bit Mm -hmm. deeper into that moment because um so much of this show is to to give people permission um to follow that dream and to to put the fears aside and to walk in faith and and that's what you're living so it's so exciting i i want to kind of touch on um something that's so near and dear to my heart 
clearly near and dear to your heart uh, and to the hearts of so many, especially during this season um, with Veterans Day upon us. Um, these veterans deserve it all. And um, having so many family members that are veterans, um, talk about some of the programs that you are deploying into that veteran space that, as you said, and as we know, is needed now more than ever. Mm -hmm. So I had mentioned a program called Healthy Minds, Healthy Bodies, and that's kind of what was the impetus with starting all of this. Um, <clears throat> so the Healthy Minds, Healthy Bodies program is just one that Allen Force runs now. And this program could not happen without our community partners, which for the most part consist of park districts and their fitness centers, and then some local privately owned fitness centers. And what it is, is for veterans who had been injured or have some sort of chronic illness. And in my civilian mind, it wasn't just that because I'm a therapeutic recreation specialist, when we were defining how does it matter, does it matter when they were injured or how they were injured? As I dove more into the military world, there's things called service connections and there's combat related and there's all kinds of different things. Well, my training has been to assist people whatever their need, wherever it came from, with adapting activities to make it possible for them to thrive again. Mm. And maybe in a different way, but to still be able to thrive. So when we defined what the qualifications for Healthy Minds, Healthy Bodies was, it was not necessarily a service-connected injury. It could have been an injury after service as well. And for those injured veterans, um, whether it be a physical injury or a mental health injury, and some, there's a lot of research being done right now on moral injury as well. Um, those are the veterans that qualify for this program. And it's three components. It has a health club membership for a year for free. And they can bring a partner in case they need that battle buddy, in case they need a ride, in case they did. So it's easier to do something with a partner. Um, the second part is they receive up to 15 personal training hours for free. Mm -hmm. And we train the personal trainers on working specifically with the veterans, how to be a battle buddy, how to be that ally in the gym, how to be accepting um, unconditionally because they will have the training, the basics, training with the knowledge of the challenges and the unique, the unique stuff within veteran culture. Um, and then the third component is the monthly networking events that are run. So locally with each facility running it, um, they can combine with the different facilities around and um, it's a purpose of getting the veterans together again to enjoy that camaraderie and to bring their families more importantly so they can start transitioning or continue transitioning into community life but together with each other with the camaraderie. Wow. So that's the Healthy Minds, Healthy Bodies program, and that's in about 34 facilities around the Chicago area now. Wow. And we couldn't do that without our partners because we don't have the funding to do this. So these community partners that you would see on the Allen Force website, they're funding it through grants that they're getting wow. and the fundraisers that they're doing as well. So it takes a village. Yeah. Um, so that's just one of our programs, and we have four. Um, our other program is for... Uh, it's called Vet Rec, and it's for anybody with a DD-214, anyone who served in the military, and including their families. And we do just all kinds of fun activities to get out into the community and enjoy the camaraderie, but learn about new places that could become comfortable environments for them to, to go to again mm -hmm. within the communities. So we've done things, um, everything from uh, family movie nights, to skydiving and campouts, um, to fishing trips, to ice fishing, to um, Santa walks, downtown Plainfield. Um, so that's our vet rec program. Our health, our um, she force program is for just the women. And it was at an event where I was talking to a few of the female veterans specifically. And I said, you know, we have a couple programs that you could benefit from. And, and they kind of looked at me and said, you know, I really don't care to be in a sweaty environment with the male species. Mm -hmm. And it was then I kind of went, oh. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't even believe I didn't understand this at first, but they brought 
awareness to me that there's a whole lot of reasons why women might not want to be in mixed company. Absolutely. So this program, as we started it for the women veterans, um, it turned into about six months later, they were bringing their mom, their sister, their teenage daughter. And we put it out there to them, you know, is this really about female veterans or is this about women heavily impacted by the military? Wow. And they said, oh, we want to keep bringing, you know, our our uh, family members or my best friend or whatnot. So we have our She Force gatherings once a month, and it really focuses on holistic, um, whether it be just stress relief, whether it be healing, whether it be um, just learning new activities to find a, a new passion. Um, so, but there's always that camaraderie involved between the women and many of them have a lot of pretty challenging things in common yeah. that they work through. So we work closely with the vet centers and, and other places. So we always have the resources uh, to be able to refer if needed. Yeah. Um, our last program is one that I was really excited is getting more, um, awareness is our vet tank program. We have these really cool electric wheelchairs that have treads on them. I think I saw some of it on the Facebook page. It looked really cool. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> we loan them out for free for a veteran or their family members. So wow. again, in therapeutic recreation, it's about providing accessibility and providing whatever alternative there needs to be to one of the phrases is to normalize the activity. Um, regardless of your limitations. Mm. So whether it be physical health or mental health, um, Allen Force now provides, we have equipment like the Vet Tank program for physical assistance. And uh, we also now have a, a cool trailer we can send out with it as well. As somebody can pull it and take it for an event or take it for a weekend or a month vacation if they wanted to, if it was available. Sure. So we do those and also a lot of community education as well. Well, I think it's, it's, thank you so much for that kind of suite of, of, of offerings because I think, you know, again, getting this awareness out to the community, what I love so much of what I heard you say is each and every single one of it is building community, mm -hmm. um, especially when you talk about, um, you know, the female community and, and everything you just shared. I think it's just awesome that you're actually reaching out to your audience and asking them, hey, what is it that you want? What is it that we can serve you with? I mean, I just think that's just an amazing approach, um, such a servant heart approach to creating a service organization that that truly is trying to serve their members. I love it. Um, I want to kind of, and, and I also, I'd be mad if I didn't mention that you and we, we talked about this, you first became on my radar from a friend of ours um, that was kind of walked into one of your huge events and then just hung around because they were like, this looks like an awesome time. Yeah, I just learned about that. Just learned about it. And, and you know, to me, I just think it's neat that, you know, learning about Allen Force that way, really where the rubber meets the road, that there was an event he felt welcomed at just walking up to. I just think it's a great testimony to who you guys really are um, of just being very welcoming to every every type of walk that's out there. Um, yeah. Could I add on that Please, event? Yeah. So that event he was talking about, actually, it, it was um, just a, a project from the heart of one of our veteran volunteers. Mm. And it was through her suggestion, uh, her name is Carla, and I, I don't know um, how familiar you are, and, and I'm always learning. I did not serve in the military, so I'm constantly learning more and more and more. Um, but she came in uh, back in January, and we were going to do a 50th commemoration for the Vietnam War mm. uh, pinning ceremony. We're a partner with the national um, Vietnam 50th commemoration um, movement that's out there. And it's about four or five years old now. But we were going to do a pinning ceremony. She was helping. So after the pinning ceremony and finally welcoming home all these veterans that served, um, the official time was between 1955 to 1975, uh, we got back to the Allen Force office in Plainfield, and um, she's helped me put stuff away. And she said, Donna, you know, this is the 30th anniversary of Desert Storm. Can you do something for us? Wow. And I said, I would be honored to. What do I do? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so together, I, I was asking her all kinds of questions, and then I started calling other people that I was in school with in different places and, and just asking. I was like, you served in Desert Storm. You know, we want to honor the 30th commemoration. And so what ended up that um, your, friend your friend Keith ended up at downtown Plainfield was 
the culmination of these ideas wow. and it ended up being a beautiful day uh, first of all physically it was incredible and the um, we had about 41 Desert Storm veterans honored and we had mul many other gen you know eras there wow. and families and we were able to pin them and give them a commemorative uh, 30th commemoration um, kind of like a challenge coin, but we used a poker chip because it was tied into a motorcycle run. Oh, and right. that's kind of a tradition in motorcycle runs, you give them a poker chip. Yeah. And then we had a, a great um, party afterwards fundraiser at Garage Band Brewing. And it was, and that's what Keith stumbled upon. Love it. And it was just, and that would not have come together without all of the community pitching in for so many different things, everywhere from, um, Kane and DuPage County and Kendall County to Will County. There are so many things that came together to make that happen. Well, let's talk about this. I was going to save this question for a little bit later, but let's, it's a perfect segue. Um, you know, cause I'm inspired in this moment. Um, and I know so many, so much of our audiences as well. If someone's looking to, um, get involved, mm -hmm. um, whether on the volunteer basis, which how fulfilling that would be. Mm -hmm. Um, but even on either the donation side or whatever, whatever support Allen force needs in the moment, what what is a way for them to do that? What are some of the ways available for them to do that? Uh, generically, we have our website, allenforce.org, and there's a donate button on there. Um, we also have a page on our website where we've tried to outline a lot of different ways that people can get involved. And pretty much it would be contact me. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to, every time somebody calls and wants to volunteer or wants to um, get involved somehow, the first thing I want to do is have a conversation with them and find out why, what's your passion behind this mm. and, and what's your drive behind this and make sure they get steered into that avenue where they're going to enjoy it as much as we do um, serving. So um, allenforce.org or our phone number's on the website as well. And um, our building now, we're, we were welcomed into the Plainfield Township Community Center. So we have a home office now. Love it. And that's been really exciting. So we're in there just, I think it's just about our year anniversary. Wow. And um, so we're going to be 10 years old next year. So we've been floating around for a long time. But um, they can come into the office at any time as well because we share that um, wonderfully with the Plainfield Park District. And, um, of course, the township owns that and is who welcomed us into the space. Well, so what a great moment great. for someone to get connected to, to kind of ride the wave to the 10-year party I'm sure you guys are going to have. I'm sure it's going to be a celebration. We're planning. <laughs> yeah. And we need help with that. Absolutely. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Um, so let's, let's, let's touch on, um, uh, as we're starting to close here, let's mm -hmm. touch on um, some of the future, in addition to the to the ten year celebration, that's going to be you know wonderful. Mm -hmm. Let's touch on some uh, some other uh, goals or missions or uh, milestones that that potentially you might be looking for here in the either short term or long term. So some really exciting things have been happening lately. Uh, in the past nine years, I'm going to give a little history first. In the past nine years, we together with our community partners and together with all of our volunteers, we're primarily a volunteer organization. We've been blessed to be able to make an impact on the lives of more than 2,400 veterans and their families. Wow. And it just boggles my mind. And the only reason I'm able to know that is because last year, through a grant, we were able to start up a database. And we literally had a stack of papers, and I was able to hire some data input people, and we got them all plugged into this database that I'm still learning how to use um, to its fullest potential. Um, so moving forward, with a couple more grants that we were able to get help writing and some extra funding that we're looking to get to broaden our services. I'm so excited to hopefully hire some people part-time. Yeah. And we have had amazing veterans volunteering with us for years. And especially during and, and you know post-COVID, hopefully, um, in this time right now, it would be such a blessing to be able to actually hire them as a part-time staff to give back to them after how much they've been giving to us mm. and and other people out there who want to come on board so Love that's that. something i'm just working really hard to make happen moving forward because allen force can't grow unless we have that regular support mm -hmm. and it, it's been amazing having you know more hundreds of volunteers over the years 
Um, but having somebody there five days a week really can make a huge impact on on growth and uh, serving. Oh, it's so exciting. Well, we, we will definitely, the word is out now, and uh, <laughs> we, we will lift that up for sure. Um, as we come to a close here, Donna, I'm, I'm just so inspired by this interview and so inspired by you um, taking this, this, you know, dream of yours to honor your father and to support our veterans um, in such a graceful way. It's just so beautiful. The Plainfield community is honored to have you. Um, I want to ask you this question in closing. Uh, because you are a hero to so many, who is your hero? Oh, wow. Uh, my whole life, my mom has been my hero. And my dad died when I was a year old. So she raised us on her own, um, figured things out, made things happen, worked hard to, to make sure we all were able to do and move forward and, and try to be even better. Um, but I'd have to say, in addition to that, it. In the last 10 years, it's literally, <laughs> I get emotional. It's, it's literally been overwhelming the amount of people I've met who are heroes. Whether it be, whether it be a veteran who, who served, whether it be a veteran who came back and has been overcoming the effects of their, their service. And thriving through it, figuring out how to use the tools and thrive through it, whether it be the families that supported them and have thrived through this as well, um, the caregivers that you see, and not just within the veteran world, I mean, a caregiver of a parent or a caregiver of a child with a disability, um, they're such silent heroes. And you know, I, I actually recently looked up that word and I wrote it down. It's a hero is a person admired for courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. Mm -hmm. And I think when people say, oh, you know, the sports figure is my hero or something. And I just, I want to encourage people to just look out there with a different perspective and, and with an open perspective to just even a person in the grocery line in front of them to see a little gesture made or something out there. It's amazing how many heroes you'll see in a day and even within your family. So it's it's pretty overwhelming to think about that and what an amazing world this place would be, you know? And we all have a little hero inside of us. <laughs> so that's, that's a prayer I have for everybody to find your own hero inside you and let it shine. Just beautiful, Donna, just beautiful. And, and to that point, thank you for being our hero today. Um, and thank you for honoring our veterans. Um, that has been an honor. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you to our audience for tuning in to another episode of Not Your Average Joe, powered by Mortgage Message. We'll see you next week, everyone. Take care. Hey there, I'm Donna Allen Relag. I'm from Allen Force. I was just a guest on you, Not Your Average Joe. If you know of any community heroes out there, we would love to hear their story.